I don't want anybody to make a mistake. We are poisoned. The core and the EPA have both stated the water that we're discussing right now is toxic. An algae crisis threatening our treasure coast. A cycle of despair and disgust amidst promises made and broken. Billions of gallons of water are rushing from Lake Okeechobee to our coastline. How much pollution is too much? How much danger is too much? How much before this will stop? Now, I negotiated this hearing during the Committee Proceedings for the Water Resources and Development Act, a bill that is all about the Corps of Engineers and water projects because a number of important policies to benefit all of Florida were stripped out of this bill in order to benefit one industry. This was done in the late night hours after months of bipartisan negotiations. My name is Noah Valens. I have the pleasure of serving as secretary for the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Lake Okeechobee and the whole ecosystem was dramatically altered by the Army Corps of Engineers and you know, a misguided attempt decades and decades ago, believing that wetlands were not something we should have. We now recognize that was an absolute mistake in our trying to rebuild um, the system. It's inexplicable that the Corps would not adopt into the Lake Okeechobee rulebook a management strategy that has the potential to help millions of South Floridians, the estuaries, and American, America's Everglades. First thing that I want to say that was stripped, reducing ecological harm to Everglades National Park and water conservation areas. Now why, after us spending billions of dollars to fix the Everglades, would we not be able to put into that law uh, I, I gotta ask it, I, I suspect it's because more water for the Everglades means that the growers south of the lake, those sugar growing corporations, need to relinquish a, a death grip that they have on Florida's water being for them first and everyone else second. Second provision that was stripped, protecting public water supply was stripped out of that bill. Another provision they had stripped out, opposed protecting the integrity of the Herbert Hoover Dyke. We were not allowed in it to state in law, protect the taxpayer funded dyke that protects people, that, that's, that's operated by the Corps of Engineers. That's probably one of the stupidest, stupidest things that I've heard since being in Washington, D.C. And beyond this, God forbid that I ask the Corps not to send toxic water into my community. This is our chance to get the water right and to save America's Everglades. The faster projects come online, the more flexibility we have in managing our water to avoid harmful and wasteful discharges to the east and west and to move more water south. Funding and completing the SERP projects are how we do that. Right now is the renaissance of Everglades restoration. More than ever, Floridians have united around the protection of our water resources. Restoration projects like the Central Everglades Plan, Tamiami Trail Bridges, and the Everglades Reservoir are critical updates and they represent the long-term approach to securing South Florida's future. I have confidence in our citizens, our scientists, and our legislators. Today's gathering strikes me as an indication that we can all clearly understand and quite possibly agree politics must be put aside if we're going to find success. Lower lake levels work to get the Everglades water, the Caloosahatchee water when they need it, protect the Herbert Hoover Dyke, which means protecting those people that live in those communities around the dike and protecting communities from toxic discharges. We have momentum right now. And I'm confident that momentum can carry us through actually finishing our authorized and soon to be authorized projects. The Water Resources Development Act of 2020 confirms the priority status of the Everglades Reservoir, requires transparency in how precious Everglades water is divvied up, and acknowledges the importance of reducing harmful discharges of toxic algae into Florida's waterways, fisheries, and communities. There is a lot at stake here. This hearing is important. Florida's future, Florida's economy, Florida's environment, Florida's safety and public health. That's why this hearing is so important. Uh, and, and it's why we have to fight to protect water supply, stop those toxic discharges and defend our communities.